So one November morning, a few years ago, I was quite in a hurry to get to work. And as I walked outside, I saw my car and I realized it had frozen. So I had to scratch my windows. And I was in a hurry, so I thought, well, um, let's preheat my car. And as I stood outside of my car, I bent over to put my key in the ignition, and I turned my key, and in a split second, I realized my car wasn't, as always, in its neutral and on its handbrake. So what happened was, my car was in reverse and started driving backwards got me immediately thrown out of my car, and I saw my own car driving over my own ankle. And in that moment, I thought to myself, well, I didn't hear anything break, so that's good. And this funny thought of how I thought my car would be heavier. But there wasn't much time to think, because my car was still driving backwards towards the house of my neighbor. So <laughs> I had to jump up, sprints heroically to my car, jumped in and pulled my handbrake. Or at least, that's my version. I think I probably stumbled towards my car and let myself fall in the car and pull my handbrake. But as nobody saw it, which I checked twice, I, I just keep my version. So as I was sitting in the car, I thought to myself, this is probably the worst excuse ever to skip a work day. <laughs> so I drove to work. And when I was at my work, I texted my mom. And um, I told her, hey mom, uh, I've just did something dumb. I drove over my own ankle with my own car, and now it looks swollen and black and blue. And she replied, oh honey, just make sure you cool your ankle and see a doctor after work. My mom was not impressed by this story. <laughs> and that's because she's my mom, and she knows that I'm quite clumsy, and that gets me into really awkward situations. So to illustrate the amount of clumsiness I've got, I collected photos of the last four years of getting myself injured. <laughs> and yeah. So I could be ashamed of this, this part of me. I could even try to hide this part of me, but instead, I today choose to share with, with you all the three most important lessons I've learned from being clumsy and living an awkward life. So, for my first lesson, um, I just realized that the clumsy person I am, I need probably a little bit more luck than you guys, the average person. So I thought to myself, what if my life was um, a retro video game? So it would look like this, kind of. And there would be everyday obstacles that I had to conquer, and every time I fail, I would lose a life. <laughs> but in retro video games, there's always a way to restore those lives. So, I think I found my way to restore lives. This is my way. To keep this balance positive, I just have to be the best version of myself that I can be. And that means doing good deeds. And those can be small gestures, like taking the time to give somebody that's lost directions. It can be um, a bigger commitment. It can be being a volunteer every week. But it's always doing something positive for the world around you. So. That's my first lesson. For my second lesson, um, well, as you might have noticed, I've got quite a big imagination. And 
this is me. And I come from a mixed family. So this is my mom, and she has blonde hair and a pale skin. And my dad obviously doesn't. And this is my brother. And this is how I saw them when I was a kid. And we had this really nice family tradition in the weekends of lunching together. And as we lunched, my mom drank buttermilk, carne milk, a sour kind of milk. And the three of us, we drank chocolate milk. So as a kid, I just connected the dots. This was my theory why I didn't have the pale skin my mom had. So if butter uh, buttermilk equals a pale skin color, then chocolate milk equals a brown skin color. And I even had this theory for people from Africa. So I thought, well, they must drink chocolate milk every day <laughs> instead of just in the weekends. And this theory worked fine for me for quite a couple of years. But then I turned 10 year, uh, I turned 10, and we had school milk. And that got me confused. Because as I was drinking my chocolate milk, I looked at my classmates, and I realized they drank chocolate milk too, and their skin color didn't change. So I was quite confused. And I went to my teacher, and I said, well, how is this possible? <laughs> and I explained him my theory. And he looked at me, and he started laughing. And then he told my whole class my theory, and everybody started laughing. And that was super awkward because I still remember it, so it made quite an impression. And that's how I learned the biological reason of the biological theory behind skin color. But I still like my theory better. <laughs> so what if the color of your drink would affect the color of your skin? What would the world look like? I think it would be fun. So my second lesson I want to share with you today is called Animate. And Animate, to me, means, um, well, it, it gets me into really awkward situations like this one, and sometimes it gets me out of really awkward situations, but what it always does is make my life more fun and interesting. So did you know that the verb to animate comes from the Latin word animus, which means inspired? And I call this... This lesson, this animates sometimes my superpower, and not just because I'm a professional animator, but also because I think that everyone can have an animated mindset. It's about, well, in an animated world, nothing is impossible. There's always a way. You just have to come up with it. It's getting inspired by really small things, like a funny combination of clothing. It can be a funny shaped cloud, or this strange obsession for cardboard boxes that cats have. It's also asking yourself more often the question, what if? What if people would have this strange obsession for cardboard boxes? Would the UPS man be your favorite person in the world? Would you prefer small shoe boxes just to stand in? Or would you rather have a big box to hide in? And this might sound just as a really fun way of passing time, but it's also usable in real life. It's not choosing for the obvious direction. It's not choosing for the first idea that pops up in your head. It's, well, did you know that the craziest creative ideas can become the most successful business plans? And please do check any crowdfunding platform to verify this fact. So, animate. It's my second lesson. For my third lesson, I would like to take you all back two years ago when I was sitting where you are sitting right now. So I was in the audience of TEDx Breda 2013, and I'm there on your right. And it was a really nice day, an uh, inspiring day. And one of the speakers that day was the lady that's sitting two chairs be um, besides me. 
And her name is Talia Sahewe, and she's from South Africa. Something in her talk really resonated with my energy. And she was telling the story about how she found her passion and the insecurities that she faced on her way. And she is this amazing, successful, award-winning uh, television maker, journalist. Um, she works all over the world, and she's really inspiring. But what really struck me, and that was the thing that resonated with my energy, was the fact that she dared to be vulnerable on this stage, as successful as she was, or is. So, don't get me wrong, I do love success stories. But I don't think that success is the way to success. I think failure is an essential part of succeeding. What if really successful people didn't make any mistakes, didn't take any wrong directions, didn't fail? That would mean that they had the shortest biographies ever. And I see these fails, insecurities like Talia shared, uh, they, can be they can be funny anecdotes. But they're more to me. They are like, like treasures. And not only because it's nice to learn from other people's mistakes, but mostly because you can give people the treasure of learning from your mistakes and the things that you did wrong. So don't keep them for yourself. That would be a waste. So do learn from each other. Be prepared to share everything that goes wrong. And not just because other people then know what not to do, but especially to relate to your human side, because everybody makes mistakes. Did you notice that the first three letters make a word? Pal, like friend. So I hope that these lessons can be your friend too. Let's get some of this theory I talked about in practice. So what I've got for you all is um, the static spread out check. And I think it's in your goodie bag. And what I can already share with you that its value is priceless. And what I would like you to do, and you get some time for this at the end of this block. So not right now, but at the end of this block, you will get some time for this. Please write down one of your treasures. So please share one of your treasures on this check. And it can be a mistake, it can be a failure, it can be, well, maybe a funny anecdote. Because this can be a great conversation starter. Sign it with your name, like I did. Um, by the way, I wrote down, I didn't take myself seriously for a really long time, and that's really a mistake I made. And that could be a really nice start of a conversation. I sign it with my name, so the person that receives the check that I wrote uh, can keep in touch with me after this, this event, if, if they want to. But <laughs> um, I invite you to, if you finished writing the, your check, to um, exchange it with somebody in the audience that you don't know yet. And be prepared to learn from each other and have a really nice conversation. So to end my presentation, um, if anyone here or somewhere else identifies with me for just, well, maybe the slightest bit or the or to my presentation, I ask you to step out of the shadow of shame, embrace your awkwardness, your clumsiness, and please do remember that if anything goes wrong, it's a treasure worth sharing. Thank you. <laughs>